Good evening. Welcome to our service of evening prayer for Holy Comforter Episcopal Church. Today is Monday, October 14th. Our service of our evening prayer begins with our opening sentence found on page 115. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Mighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us together pray by reading the Fossilarum, which begins on page 118. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of light, and to be glorified in all the worlds. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our assigned psalms for the day are Psalm 4 and 7. Psalm 4 begins on page 587 of your Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 7 begins on page 590. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. As you set me free when I am hard-pressed, have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then. And do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, Oh, that we might see better times. Light up the light of your countenance upon us, O oh Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only in you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. O Lord my God, I take refuge in you. Save and deliver me from all who pursue me. Lest like a lion they tear me in pieces and snatch me away with none to deliver me. O Lord my God, if I have done these things, if there is any wickedness in my hands, 
If I have repaid my friend with evil, or plundered him who without cause is my enemy, then let my enemy pursue and overtake me, trample my life into the ground, and lay my honor in the dust. Stand up, O Lord, in your wrath. Rise up against the fury of my enemies. Awake, O my God, decree justice. Let the assembly of the peoples gather round you. Be seated on your lofty throne, O Most High. O Lord, judge the nations. Give judgment for me according to my righteousness, O Lord, and according to my innocence, O Most High. Let the malice of the wicked come to an end, but establish the righteous. For you test the mind and heart, O righteous God. God is my shield and defense. He is the savior of the true in heart. God is a righteous judge. God sits in judgment every day. If they will not repent, God will wet his sword. He will bend his bow and make it ready. He has prepared his weapons of death. He makes his arrows shaft of fire. Look at those who are in labor with wickedness, who conceive evil and give birth to a lie. They dig a pit and make it deep. They fall into the hole they have made. Their malice turns back upon their own head. Their violence falls on their own scalp. I will bear witness that the Lord is righteous I will praise the name of the Lord Most High. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from tonight's Gospel comes from the book of Luke, the 8th chapter beginning on verse 26 to 39. Then they arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, what have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion. For many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back to the abyss. Now, there were on the hillside a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. And the people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. 
Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people of God. Thanks be to God. So this evening in Luke, we hear a story of Jesus liberating a man who was suffering under a demon. Gospel stories of demon possession can be difficult for us to relate to because in our era, we don't often experience demons so much like they're described in the Bible. But as we look at them, all demons that Jesus confronts in people really have commonalities. They cause self-destructive behaviors in their victims. The victim feels trapped in their condition and they separate the victim from living and being in community in their normal environment with their normal family circles. So, you know, when we describe it that way, it begins to sound a little bit more familiar. I think that we've all either seen or experienced some suffering of those same kind of oppressions in our modern world. We just don't call them out as demons. And if we define demons as those forces which have captured us or captivated us and prevented us from becoming what God intends for us to be or living the life described in the word as that abundant life that God intended for us to live and we're surrounded by or possessed by or we've witnessed many demons as folks did in the times that Jesus walked the earth. Our demons can be made or called out as all types. You think of folks that you've seen suffering under behavioral health issues, um, mental illnesses like schizophrenia, paranoia, or folks that are suffering under diseases that root in the biochemistry of addiction. And they are diseases. These aren't issues of willpower. These are now in our modern healthcare defined as what they are, which are diseases. We see people that have obsessions. And again, these root in biochemistry. Um, when, when someone is obsessed with various things that pull them off of their activities or daily, of daily living or pull them off of their um, being with their families or being in a productive job or being in the, that abundant life, that obsession, those are biochemically related and can be treated. Um, destructive habits and so on. Now, the similarities between this demon-possessed man and the demons that we see possessing folks in modern society, he was cut off from his family and society. He didn't live among people. He lived in the tombs. And we would probably recognize those now as caves that were used as burying places. He was driven by those demons into the wilds. So in other words, he was living. He was not living. He was, his life was living death, really. He was separated from normal people and normal living, like I said. And those demons were harming him. He was under harm, not under life. And in Mark's version of this in the synoptics, he was bruising himself. It wasn't in our reading in Luke, but um, every good physician, he was protecting folks from uh, that reading. But in Mark, he was bruising himself with stones. They were harming him in that way. And no one, in Mark it said, no one could restrain him even anymore, even with a chain. We hear that to a degree in Luke, that he would continually break the chains. And most sadly, he was so possessed by the demons, now it wasn't him speaking, but the demons recognized Jesus as the son of the most high God. But the man couldn't free himself, couldn't speak for himself. 
So, the point of this story, I know I'm going kind of dark on this, but the point of this story, and of all demon healings in the Bible, in the Gospels, is that the power of God can cast away these demons, no matter what they are. And that was true then, and that's true today. The Son of the Most High God, the power of our Holy Trinity and our Most High God, can cast those demons away and restore life. When Jesus sent out his followers to teach and to heal by his power in his name, when they came back and reported and they were astonished by what happened at their hands in the name of Jesus, they said to him, Lord, even the demons submit to us. That's another story coming in Luke. And they will in the lives of who you love and in your life, in your life, when you call upon the Lord, all is restored through the power of Jesus. Amen. Let us together reaffirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, which is found on page 96. Oh, I'm sorry. I cannot get away from morning prayer, can I? That would be page 120. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We'll pray suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Our collect for proper 23 can be found on page 234. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Returning to page 123 for a collect for peace. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, all just works, give us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. O God, Father of all, whom the whole heavens adore, 
Let the whole earth also worship you, all nations obey you, all tongues confess and bless you, all men and women everywhere love and serve you in peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear God, hear now our prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings, both those spoken with our lips and those offered quietly at this time. Please feel free to put your prayers in the chat. Lord, we offer thanks that mercy has done so well. We also lift up Reverend Rachel and her family, that she has gotten to them safe and sound. Lord, we lift up Ethan and Bryn. For those of you who join us in lifting the prayer needs on our service bulletin, we lift up Celeste, David, Walter, May, Cynthia, Leanne Bonnie, Urban Rhonda, Russell, Marcy, Aaron, Sterling, Marcy, Jan, Jackie, Eunice, Faye, Melissa and Suzanne, Nancy, Anna, Roberta, Diane, Leland, Maria, Anita, Valerie, and Susie. We pray, Father, for those who have died. Let light perpetual shine among them. Particularly, we lift up Sharon Bowden and her sister and their family, Sarah Bringer, and all those who love her. And we lift up Vicki Spitzer and Kurt and their family and all who love her. Lord, we pray for those who are in areas of conflict and war. We pray for all those rendering, rendering aid and support and those in our military, particularly Matthew, Hayden, and Perry, who are actively serving. Lord, we pray in celebration for those who are celebrating the feast of their nativity, their birthdays. We lift up Judy, Sienna, Libby, Keith, Porta, Sharon, Sydney, and Denise. We pray in celebration for the anniversary of the union of James and Karen, and Chris and Beth, and Robbie and Sarah. Lord, we lift up our national church and particularly the mission and health of our presiding Bishop Michael, as well as our Bishop-elect Sean. We thank you for the assistance in our Florida Diocese of our assisting bishops, Scott and Chip, for our standing and steering committees, um, for those that serve so selflessly, and for all of those sitting on committees. We thank you for their leadership. Lord, we thank you for our local church, Holy Comforter, for all of our parishioners. We thank you for our lay leaders, for our vestry and clergy. We thank you, Lord, that you will be with us and ask that you would be with us in all of our upcoming events. We pray for our companion parishes in Cuba, St. Michael's and All Angels in Tabelos, 
and St. James the Apostle, Apostle in Baruga. We pray for their priest, Mother Haiti, and Father Roberto and their parishioners. And we pray for all of our local parishes, Lord, all of their parishioners and leaders and clergy. We pray for Holy Comforter Episcopal School and all of the little ones there and their family and their staff and teachers and administrators that care for them so well, particularly Peter, Amy, Brenda, Michelle. And we pray this week for Shane and Colby. And Lord, we lift all of the houses of faith here in Tallahassee, their clergy and staff and congregants and for your church universal. Let us together join in the general thanksgiving found on page 125. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you've made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such thankful hearts that we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.